Hello everyone, how are you doing? So welcome to another video of Origin and Evolution of Life. Um, up till now we have been discussing uh, various theories. In the initial part of the chapter we discussed the uh, theories of origin of life. Uh, wherein we discussed uh, the theories of special creation, abiogenesis, biogenesis, then chemical evolution of life uh, put forth by uh, Operin and Haldane, which was further proved by Dure and Miller by conducting an experiment that uh, uh, life began uh, with chemical uh, evolution, that is molecules and uh, organic and inorganic molecules that interacted with one another and then that gave rise to uh, the first cell. Uh, then you have, uh, uh, then we moved to the evolution part wherein we discussed the Darwin's theory of natural selection in detail. In the last video, we covered two main uh, examples in detail, that is the industrial melanism, how nature selects the uh, or uh, selects a particular species which is capable of adapting to the environment, to the changing environment, you can say, and is it capable of uh, surviving and reproducing. So compete, survive, and reproduce. These are the three factors which will uh, help any particular uh, group of organisms or species to, <clears throat> uh, you know, to establish its population and uh, which in turn the nature uh, favors, so the, 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 the natural condition also favors the survival, competition and reproduction of a particular species. So both goes hand in hand and uh, that particular species is established. Okay, that is how evolution gradually takes place. <clears throat> I mean by one of these uh, factors. <clears throat> So uh, we saw the industrial melanism example and we also saw the Darwin Finches example. Now in this video, we move to another theory of evolution. That is, we will be discussing modern synthetic theory of uh, uh, evolution and uh, various uh, subtopics under it. Uh, we will be studying uh, genetic variations also, which is more or less a part of the modern synthetic theory of evolution. Now here you have a lot of new terminology. Some of the terms you might have uh, heard in lower standards. Some you will be hearing it for the first time. So let's begin. Now, uh, before we get ourselves introduced to the theory of uh, modern synthetic theory, uh, now the name itself tells you that this is the widely accepted theory uh, till today or, uh, you know, till now uh, we, we, uh, we uh, understand or you know we base our discussion on this synthetic theory of evolution that is why the name is telling you modern okay so uh, uh, before we begin the introduction uh, these are the parts of the theory we are going to uh, break this into smaller parts in this video we will be covering up to here okay and in the next video we will be talking about the nat natural selection we have already talked about we will be talking some of the genetic variations here also and geographical isolation and reproductive isolation we will be talking in the next video okay so we will focus more mainly on these terminologies there are various sub topics sub terminologies also involved in this uh, so to understand gene pool gene frequency we need to understand certain other terms also so let's begin uh, basically this uh, Modern synthetic theory is uh, was uh, was established or you know was uh, framed in early nineties. Okay, in early nineties, nineteen thirty seven or forty two like that. Uh, so various scientists and various uh, uh, researchers, you know, based on the history and ancient theories, uh, they uh, proposed this theory of. Uh, synthetic uh, theory of evolution, which is, you know, the name as modern theory. So basically, what does it tell you? So up till now, the different, different theories, we started from the very beginning of special creation. Now we are on the modern one. So this theory explains evolution in terms of genetical changes. So um, we basically, we have traveled through time. So all, all the theories that we discussed were ancient. Now we are at the most latest one which is talking about this, uh, which is, which base, the, uh, the theory bases its uh, explanation or understanding on 
uh, uh, the terminologies of genetical changes in populations. Okay, and uh, it tells you that uh, because of the genes, okay, in population and they undergo mutation, they undergo recombination. Yes, uh, mitosis, meiosis, especially. Uh, this leads to origin of new species. This leads to evolution. Okay, so genetical changes in any population will be leading to origin of new species. This is what today's um, so theory of evolution uh, talks about. Okay, so uh, basically uh, now we need to understand, to understand the theory in more detail, we need to understand certain concepts, smaller, smaller concepts. Uh, before we... Uh, so before we move to the next slide, I would like to just explain this, uh, what is population. Uh, it is, see, in simple terms, we all are aware what a population is, but when we add the term genetic or Mendelian to it, so what does, uh, what, what extra element does it gives to the word? Yes, so population, we know that it is made up of members, right? Uh, you have, uh, let's say a particular area, Let's say you have Mumbai and Mumbai has so and so number of people in um, the city. So that becomes a population. It's nothing but simply the members of the same species that interpret. We are talking about when we talk about population in a city, obviously we are talking about humans. And if we, let's say, talk about the population of animals in the city, so that is very specific. So when we are generally talking about population, it's the member of the uh, same species that interbreed uh, among themselves, okay? When that population interbreeds, what happened? Variation results, yes or no? Variation, different varieties of, uh, uh, you know, uh, individuals are born. This occurs naturally because of the genes that get, you know, uh, the, the, that it get intermixed and uh, that we combine within a population which leads to variation, right? This we have discussed in detail in chapter 3, inherit uh, Mendelian genetics, right? Inheritance and variation. So, uh, you have different, different genes uh, of different people which come together, they make up the population. So, all that collection of genes, all that collection, total number of genes, okay, and it's allelic form, right? We are all aware what is allelic form. We have discussed this, uh, uh, we know this concept from chapter 3. Allelic forms, let's say we were talking about tall plants, Mendel crossed a tall homozygous tall plant with a, a homozygous dwarf plant. So what is this? Two capital T. Yes, uh, so the, these are uh, gene existing pairs. Yes, so the, this is an allele. Yes, this is also an allele. So genes and its allele pairs. So let's say this gene is coding for tallness. So how many alleles to allele? So this also is considered, allele form is also considered. Okay, within a population together, everything together is known as gene pool. What it is known as? Gene pool. So you, you need to know this terminology by heart. Uh, population, we all are aware of. What is gene pool? The total number of the genes or the collection of all the genes of all the individuals, huh? of all the individuals in that particular population will be the gene pool. Okay? Yes? So let's define consist of gene pool consists of all the alleles in all the individuals that make up the population yes and we are dealing with the very simplest terminology with respect to evolution evolution when we talk about evolution evolution takes place on a larger scale okay let's say we consider the whole uh, planet into consideration population is very uh, the, at the smallest level okay and gene pool is what it's the bank it's the reservoir it's the bank of all the genes from where uh, it will contribute to variation leading to evolution okay it supplies the genetic variation for evolution as i just mentioned so sexual recombination taking place meiosis taking place fertilization taking place they all provide variety in offspring 
we have discussed this in chapter three and four that uh, meiosis, uh, genetic recombination, linkage, linkage pattern, complete linkage and complete linkage and fertilization in which genetic recombination takes place in the meiosis step, okay? Wherein the paternal and the maternal genes, uh, homologous regions of the chromosome come together uh, randomly. The genes are some of the genes are exchanged, and that is how you see variety in the offspring. Yeah, so this all contributes to variation, which leads to evolution. So gene pool uh, in a population. Okay, I just uh, do this. Gene pool in a population leading to different mechanism like uh, sexual recombination takes place, meiosis takes place, okay, fertilization takes place. This leads to variation and variation contributes to evolution. So this is how the chain is followed, okay. Then uh, as, an, uh, as these mechanisms are appearing, are happening in nature, mutations also take place, yes or no? Random mutation, sudden mutation, changes in the alleles, changes in the gene, which will finally affect the final outcome, okay? And uh, we cannot predict that. So, it cannot be predicted. So, this is what we understand by the gene pool. Sum total of all the alleles of all the individual in a population uh, in addition to their allelic forms as well. Now we move to what is known as gene flow. So when individuals or gametes or spores move in between population, okay, move in between population, move mean what? Uh, if you can see the picture over here, you have the white rabbits over here and you have the black uh, dark color rabbits over here. So if a white rabbit moves from this particular area to the place where the black ones are living. So what has happened? Uh, the gene, if uh, the, the rabbit moves along with it and let's say the white ones goes and mates with one of the black ones. So what has happened? There will be genetic variation. It can alter the allele frequency of these white ones. Okay. Uh, just like we saw the example of uh, the white cattle, uh, you know, crossed with the brown cattle. Okay. And we saw that in hybrid condition, you, you see the patch, the cattle, the cow, or the, you know, the cattle, which is having white as well as uh, black or brown patches on it. So that is what is meant by gene flow, movement of individuals or gametes or spores between population can alter their allele frequency in their population. Here the example is given as white moving to the black region like that. So new varieties can come up. You can have now rabbits. Uh, now if the white ones mate with one of the black ones, you might have a rabbit which might have uh, white and uh, black patches on it. Okay. That's possible. So this changes the frequencies of this allele uh, uh, frequency or the gene pool in this uh, particular population. So, this movement is known as gene flow. Okay, moving to the next terminology, which uh, uh, this leads to what variation? Gene flow also leads to variation, and then variation contributes to evolution. Right? The final outcome of all these is what? Variation leading to evolution. We are discussing different, different factors that will lead to what? That will lead to variation. And this variation will eventually contribute to the evolution. This is what modern synthetic theory uh, chalks down different, different factors, different, different pointers. So we have covered uh, the genetic population, the gene pool, the gene flow. Now next factor is genetic drift. What is genetic drift? A change in the allele frequency that occurs purely by chance. Okay? That occurs purely by chance. Now, what do we mean by this? Okay, for example, uh, genetic drift changes uh, frequencies of allele. It may operate in any population, large or small. Now, before going to that, uh, the next point, uh, it is a change in the frequencies, allele frequencies that occurs purely by chance. Like 
accidentally or naturally or by chance okay suppose uh, uh, for example i just uh, i'll just uh, mention an example uh, uh, any allele uh, uh, got gets eliminated any allele gets eliminated uh, from a population due to events like accidental death okay prior to making of mating of an organism yeah let's say uh, let's say in this population uh, there was only one uh, frog of a different phenotype okay and uh, before this frog could mate with the another frog of this uh, you know let, let's say the one which is greener in color uh, before it could mate okay and it had the specific phenotype and before that uh, there was an accidental death of this particular organism okay so what happened change in the frequency so addition or deletion addition like your uh, addition took place or the removal of any specific allele from any population okay which uh, which let's say is a sole possessor of that particular allele so this might lead to a drift this might lead to a drift it may occur in small large or uh, medium size of in any population okay so that is what we understand by genetic drift which will eventually lead to what it will eventually lead to variation okay leading to evolution mutation we have discussed in the previous video in detail so basically a change in the gene uh, setup in the sequences of the dna will result in genetic changes this will provide the raw material for evolutionary changes so let's say earlier the butterflies were uh, of a particular color and uh, there was some genetic changes due to environmental factors or due to some internal uh, factors uh, a mutation took place and over a bit of time the mutation got collected you know it got amplified in the species in that particular population slowly and gradually and now those butterflies are of a different phenotype different color different size different shape so mutations create new alleles leading to variety leading contributing to evolution contributing to evolution okay then another factor is natural selection this we have also studied wherein the environment favors okay the environment of uh, favors the selection of a particular uh, species okay wherein the individual organisms possess favorable traits which is more likely to survive and reproduce in that given environment in that given environment so the ability of the individual organism or phenotypes or population uh, which is capable of surviving and reproduction in a given environment so natural selection leading to variety so here the example of industrial melanism is given which is uh, discussed in the earlier video so this leads to variety two different colored moths were seen in the example uh, leading to the evolution from white to black and then uh, you know uh, the survival of black uh, after the industrial revolution and then finally genetic recombination this is because of sexual reproduction mating uh, crossing with each other so organisms made with each other they carry out sexual reproduction with each other with no preference for particular genotypes this happens naturally no one selects a particular genotype naturally different different types of genotypes are uh, you know uh, they come up and uh, different individuals having different traits leading to variety in the siblings and finally leading to evolution these are the factors that contribute to variation leading to evolution which is uh, you know explained under modern synthetic theory of evolution so now the theory of evolution now at this point of stage uh, we consider these factors rather than you know the ancient ones like special creation or life evolved from uh, chemical evolution and all that stuff 
so that's all for this video in the next video we will be talking about uh, the next part of the modern synthetic theory till then thank you take care bye bye keep revising